Welcome back to Rude Mode EX, the mod that makes Plants vs Zombies much more difficult. In this series, we attempt to beat the hardest levels in PvZ history, and you are currently watching part 9 of the series. In the last video, we beat some of the most unfair minigames in this mod, and I strongly recommend you watch the previous parts first, as most things are changed from the original game in Brood Mode EX. Today, we are continuing on the minigames, and the first one today is Portal Combat. Unlike the original, this minigame somehow introduces the mechanic of having three portals at once. Each portal's exit where zombies come out of can now be linked to the two other entrances of the other portals. Plants can only see one entrance, so they can't shoot through both entrances. For example, the repeater in the second row can't hit zombies in the fifth row, but can in the fourth row. What makes this minigame much more difficult than usual is how grave-head zombies can teleport easily to the last few columns of the lawn. If you don't get a cactus to push you back a few tiles, you might be easily done for if it dies on the first column and spawns a grave there, blocking you off from planting there for the rest of the game. Unlike the original portal combat, zombies can spawn in the rows where a portal is positioned on the ninth column. This means a zombie can teleport all the way from where they spawn to nearly the end of the lawn almost immediately. It creates situations like this where you don't even have a chance to react to that balloon zombie, and that's a lot more gone. The large amount of graves blocking will cause a huge problem as more zombies flood onto the lawn and ravage the unprotected lanes. Since there was a grave on the second column in the first row, we couldn't plant any attack implants to defend off the zombies there without it getting eaten straight away, so it was game over with a grave head zombie there. Plus, we were screwed anyways in the bottom row. Unfortunately, because of how zombies can spawn on rows of portals on the ninth column, the majority of the level is luck based on where the portals go. In the second attempt, it was even worse than the first one. A grave had teleported all the way to the first column instantly. The absurdity in this level is insane. And then, I found out on my third attempt that zombies didn't spawn in the fourth row unlike the previous two attempts when there was a portal on the ninth column. My guess is there was some oversight from the modders so that only the two original portals stopped zombies from spawning in their own rows if placed on the ninth column. And in the last two attempts, we were unlucky. So, I comfortably beat the level with no zombies spawning on the fourth row for the entire game, which basically disabled all the blue portals. Obviously, you still have to watch out for the final wave brief spawns, but it should be fine as long as you have your lawnmowers available. So that's Portal Combat done. For the next few minigames, the recordings got corrupted so I had to download the livestream from YouTube. Apologies in advance for the reduced video quality. All that can see is pretty much the same as the original but with zombie variants and an extra flag. What's so difficult about this level is, well, Taurus Light Zombies are a massive issue. Two columns of melon bolts are not enough to deal with them, so they end up torching our front lines in the first few waves. Then, the Gorgantros were coming on the second flag when half the rooftop is full of graves, they snatch a few more of your pots, and once you're falling behind and keeping the zombies at bay, you're toast, and the torch lanes will come from behind the horde and finish the deal. That's what's happened for the hour of attempts I tried on playing this level, but the solution is very simple. I'll skip the nonsense and jump to the solution. Simply said, it's another very luck-based level. All you need to get is 4 columns of melon bolts within the first few waves, and you can defend off the force lines and the rest of the zombies with relative ease, and then your front lines won't fall very quickly. This will allow us to stock up on our instant use plans, which is important to survive the third flag. Take jalapenos and squashes as much as possible to stall the zombies for the third flag, as the roof cleaners will need to be used for the final wave grave spots. Fairly easily, that is column like you see in beat. Opposite Bonanza is the easiest minigame out of all 20. Firstly, the early game is pretty much unchanged, except for zone bodies now shooting Zambotni peas. That isn't much of an issue to beat in a level, since Umbrella Leaves deflect Zambotni peas in Brutal Mode EX, a cheap and effective counter. We can then just plant potato mines for the first few waves to clear out Zambonis and Bobsleds. Then, getting a column or two of spike rocks is pretty much already a guaranteed win, because there are no threats other than Zambonis and Bobsled teams, which all miserably die to just spike rocks. I like having Cattail here just as a backup, but it's pretty redundant anyways. Throughout the level, just replace your weakest spike rock every time you can, or plant more, and you will beat it with ease on the first try. Make sure to have jalapeno since the ice rolls won't melt, so you don't want to be screwed if you mess up. Next level is Zombie Dimble Zombie Quick. The zombies in this level ring a familiar bell, don't they? We have pole vaulters, poco zombies, balloon zombies, football zombies, oh wait, also snorkel zombies, and dancers, and zombonies, and dolphin riders? The entire party's here. This level has an awfully similar combination to Zombotni 1, so I decided, why not bring the exact same lineup of plants but change the flower pot to lily pad of course, and what do you know, the exact same strategy that I used in Zombotni 1 worked marvelously. I suppose you've watched the video on it before, right? 
Okay, aside from also having lily pads, jalapenos would be much better than squash due to its horse slide zombies being relevant this level instead. The early game is the same. You plant two cattails for the early zombies while using instant appropriately, then get two free peters to spread its slow effect across all rows while getting a third cattail if appropriate. Then, get repeater in all six rows and walnuts to defend against zombotany peas from zombonies. Focus on upgrading to gatling peas on the second and fifth row first, then gatling peas upgrading on the side rows, and lastly upgrading in the pool rows. One color of gatling peas, good game, easy strategy, that's how you beat the level, it's really just that simple with this cattail free peter gatling combo. What a difficult level completed, gatling pea sure isn't busted, it needs a buff. Well, it appears a glitch has stopped the level from being beaten. <laughs> Unfortunately, I actually had to beat the level again, which was really frustrating and wasted a lot of time, but this won't happen ever again, right? Wacka Zombie starts off nice and simple without much hassle, just like the original. We also now have Doomshroom instead of Potato Mine. How is this even more difficult than the original Wacka Zombie? Well, just wait and you'll see. After when you're about two thirds to the level in the progress bar, the difficulty of the level will spike by a lot. What do I mean by that? Well, so you see, the zombies spawn from the gravestones spawn every second. Yes, a wave of zombies is spawn every second. If that doesn't sound unfair enough, how about also make the zombies move faster and faster? Yep, that's this level right here. When you thought that couldn't get worse, the zombies start spawning instantaneously one after another when you're about 90% done. Zombie after zombie, and you can't even do much to slow them down when you only have one Doom Shroom and one Zai Shroom. Before you ask me to plant my Grave Busters, that's literally going to make almost no difference when this many zombies are coming at you. Wow, this sure isn't completely impossible to be for a normal human being with the amount of zombies having a party on the lawn. Just like the original Brutal Mode version of this minigame, it is impossible to beat it without using some kind of cheat to tap multiple times at once as a human. Your conventional mouse won't be sufficient to beat this with your one finger on the left mouse button. And ironically, you need a better gaming mouse to beat the level legitimately. Or, alternatively, you could be like me, just use an auto clicker. There's really no strategy involved in the level anyways, and I don't see the effort to try and beat a mini game like this otherwise. Unfortunately, I have forgotten that not even an auto clicker was enough to beat the level at 10 clicks per second, and you pretty much need something like around 20 clicks per second to beat the level. Even with the auto clicker at 20 clicks per second, we were only just able to narrowly beat it, and we were still losing a lot more at the end. Goes to show how unfair this level is, huh? The funniest part was, there were so many pea shooter zombies on the lawn at once, not even a doom shroom lived long enough to explode up the zombies. But there we have it, with tiny clicks per second on an auto clicker, we managed to beat the level while still managing to lose all our lawnmowers. Now, moving on to last stand. It appears that the mod developers have somehow forgotten to ban a plant that now generates sun for us this level. Well, since Grave Buster and Tango Kelp aren't banned, we can make infinite sun by just planting Grave Buster since they give back 75 sun. So, this level's difficulty is completely blown out of the water since we have infinite sun to set up any kind of perfect defense we like to do. It's also another way to get infinite coins, but farming in the Zen Garden minigame is more efficient. And let's just skip right to the end of this level since there's basically nothing I need to explain about this level when we have infinite sun. Okay, I'm not gonna show me playing Last Stand over again, but my one piece of advice is DON'T LOSE THE GHOST JACK IN THE BOX ZOM- Next up is Zombotany 2. It's essentially just a beef up version of the original Zombotany 2, featuring all the Zombotanies from the Night Roof levels. In this level, pea shooter zombies have full health screen doors. This means that they now won't die to cattails since they don't pierce through screen doors. However, this does mean that Squash now one-shots them like how it did on Night Roof. Moreover, I quickly realized that Cabbage Bolt is an excellent choice this level. None of the zombies have low health, as they all have screen doors or bucket heads, exception being jalapeno zombies. That means we can leverage Cabbage Pulse's extremely high damage without having to suffer its low damage against basic zombies. Funnily enough, a Cabbage Pulse kills the wall and zombie faster than it would against a basic zombie. It may come as a surprise, but because the pea shooter zombies have full health screen doors, the early game is easier than in Zombie 1. We only need Cabbage Pulse and Squashes to counter both pea shooter and wall zombies. In addition to that, there are no more full walters or football zombies, making it much easier for us to get some flowers. 
all things considered, the first two second flag is not that bad, as only a few jalapeno zombies show up. They will be the most frightening zombies this level, as they don't die to a squash or cherry bomb, so they can easily wipe an entire row of defenses which can be detrimental. On the other hand, Puff Shrooms counter squash zombies for free and walnuts are already in place to block off twist scaling these zombies. Fauna zombies are then just walnut zombies with more health, so they're not going to be a big issue either. The issue begins after the second wave, since multiple jalapeno zombies spawn at once, becoming very difficult for us to prevent them from exploding. With many jalapeno zombies all coming at once, soon there will be no defense left at all. Your goal after the second wave is to simply suppress the zombies from advancing too much, since it won't be possible to kill them. Sacrifice lawnmowers appropriately and use your instincts to try and slow down the zombies from approaching your house. Ideally, we can save at least one lawnmower to force the zombies into one single row at the final wave and win. And there we go! That's going to be Zombotany 2 completed in only a few attempts thanks to Cabbage Pulse. This is one of if not the only level in the game without any basic zombies, so we can use Cabbage Pulse while not experiencing its major disadvantage. Wild Up Bowling 2 is another 4th flag level in Brutal Mode EX. It's an extremely tedious level to beat, as Greener Zombies massively increase the difficulty of the level by adding the Squash Greener variant. I tried to play the level for about a few times with the same strategy I employed in Wild Up Bowling 1. Unfortunately, I couldn't beat the level, which for some reason seems to be much harder than usual even with Giant Walnuts. However, there is one way to play that can be used to beat this level without needing to spend nearly as much effort. When we have too many walnuts stocked up in the conveyor belt, the game tends to give more explode nuts and giant walnuts instead of any regular walnuts. It's pretty convenient to just essentially spam basically instant use plans for the entire level instead of relying on predicting a walnut's path. The level was extremely long and turns out just using explode nuts and giant walnuts was a free ticket to victory. The best way to play is to not kill the zombies too quickly to stock up more giant walnuts and explode nuts. Unfortunately, playing like this drags the level lo so long, it literally takes about 15 minutes for one full attempt until the final wave. It's just a really boring process to play until the final wave this level. Again, as for the final wave, you can simply plant a walnut to let it hit many zombies consecutively when the board is basically filled up from the gravestone spawns. This will net you a bunch of rewards, including freezing all zombies on the screen and several giant or explode nuts. You have enough time to plant the other things to kill everything, so no worries on the final wave. But that is Walnut Bowling 2 completely cheesed by exploiting the conveyor belt logic. Poka Party had a few more zombies join in on the party, as it seems. We now also have pole vaulters and dancing zombies in the mix. Oh yeah, also adding bungee zombies into the mix just to block our attacking plants and deny us from using plant turn. And we can't use Gatling Peas to kill off the angry dancers since we are on the roof. Plus the level has free flags, big yikes. Thankfully, just like the vanilla version of Poco Party, we get a longer period of time to set up at the start of the level. Unfortunately, a huge issue here is Squash no longer kills Poco zombies, so we were kind of screwed in the early game. I had to use attacking plans to counter them, so I first tried Cattail. Unfortunately, it was not effective due to the bucket at Poco zombie being too difficult for Cattails to handle and too easily overwhelmed. I tried Split P2 since it deals with Poco zombies and pole vaulters very well. Unfortunately, I forgot to consider that dancing zombies just walk straight to them and start eating them away, so that was not a plan that worked. Trying Free Peter was also ineffective since it was too difficult to set up two of them early on to stop most zombies in time. Poco zombies could just sneak right through you early on and make you lose early. Melon Pulse combined with Magnus Shroom and Plantern would counter the Poco zombies and pole vaulters, but not the dancing zombies. Angry Dancers would completely dodge the attack of the Melon Pulse, so it didn't work. They're a very big problem here as it seems. Someone on stream suggested that I should use garlic since the angry dancing zombies are vampires as they're bald and we will kill them. I thought it was a complete joke obviously, like why the hell would that make any sense? As a joke, I decided to use garlic ones and placed it on top of an angry dancing zombie. Okay guys, we're gonna try it right here. You guys said it's gonna work. Wait. Okay. I guess it wasn't a joke. Um, all right. Yeah, all this time, I had not even known about this very quirk. I was completely blown away by this interaction. Garlic was not a useless plant and it was actually a very considerable option for a level like this. I can't believe how much time I wasted on trying to beat level 66 now I know the garlic completely cheeses the angry dancers. Now with that knowledge in mind, we just need to find a strategy that can then clear out all the other zombies. Obviously, that plan of choice is Starfruit. It pierces through zombies and work on roof levels, counter bungees really well, and kill most masses of pogos and pole vaulters. Dancing zombies become a non-issue now, we can just use garlic. As simple as that, 
I was able to beat Pogo Party on my first attempt in using this strategy. It's just that much simpler when the angry dancers are no longer in the conversation. With just 3 columns of starfruit, we can pretty much annihilate everything, making this extremely difficult level very trivial. Once you can set that up, it's just time for you to plant incense for every angry dancer and win the game. Very easy. The last mini game, Dr. Zomboss's revenge is pretty much unchanged. You get the same plants and it's just 510 but a Zomboss has extra health. About how easy this level is, it's safe to say it's just like 510. Easier than the vanilla version of it. Cabbage Faults, again, do massive damage against Zomboss since Cabbage Faults do more damage against zombies with higher health, meaning we are able to wither down Zomboss's health very quickly compared to usual. And with Dr. Zomboss's revenge out of the way, that'll be 18 out of the 20 minigames completed. The last two, Invisible Ghoul and Little Zombie Big Trouble, might, in my opinion, be completely impossible to beat without playing on 50 Sun mode. Those two, I will leave them aside for now and try to beat it in another video. Next time, we will continue towards more minigames, the ones on the Limbo page. So no, we aren't completely done yet. But I'm afraid that's it for this video. If you made it this far into the video, I'm sure you enjoyed watching it for sure, so why not subscribe if you haven't already, and like this video. Thanks everyone for watching, and I will see you guys next time with more Brutal Mode EX.